Hello, everybody. Oh, there we go. All right, so this is our Algebra 1 module part one practice. So we're just going to go through. I'm going to jump around a little bit here, but um, uh, hopefully this helps out a little bit. So ascending order means to go up. Okay, like it's going from small to, to big. So if we take all these, convert everything to decimals, so 6.0105, um, two thirds is 0.66 repeating. Now absolute value makes it positive, but the negative is on the outside. So it ends up being negative 0.66 repeating. 88% reduces, or you can convert that to a decimal 0.88. 6.01 is 6.01, and then pi is uh, 3.14159, so on. Okay. So from smallest to biggest, your smallest number is going to be your negative one. So I'm going to write this down as negative absolute value of two-thirds. Okay. Now I like to cross it off then because I get confused if I don't. Uh, my next smallest number is 0.66. There's your two-thirds. Okay. Then we got 0.88 or 88%. Um, now 3.14, your pi is next. Between 6.05 and 6.01, the larger number is actually 6.05 because you're both like both those decimals in the hundred spot. Five is bigger than one, so the 6.01 goes first, and then the 6.05 is last. Okay, so there's your ascending order. Now we also have something called descending order, just the reverse, going from large to small. Okay, cool. All right, so simplify the following: 15 root 8 minus 7 root 18. You're breaking these down to perfect squares. So the square root of 8 can be broken down to root 4 times root 2. Um, over here, root 18 can be root 9 times root 2. All right, so the square root of 4 is 2. Uh, square root of 9 is 3. Okay, so 30 root 2 minus 21 root 2. You can multiply numbers outside the radicand. 30 minus 21 gives us 9 root 2. Boom, boom goes dynamite. As well. Okay, cool. All right, so um, now for this one, just to kind of show you guys a little side trick here, if you run into a problem like this, you're allowed to use the graphing calculator. Use it, okay? Really help yourself out. So up top, because it's in the numerator, I'm going to put, okay, parentheses, and then three parentheses, one minus root five, okay? To the right, close it, close it divided by parentheses 2 square root of 45 and close it. All right. Now, obviously, that's not going to be the answer on the multiple choice test. But what you can do is, okay, jot this down and then start going through your answers of A, B, C, D and see which one matches up with it. Whichever one's the same, circle it, you got your answer. Okay. So it's just a nice way of bypassing the problem, which you can definitely do in a multiple choice test. All right, number four, simplify the following. You can do all this on the calculator as well, okay? The absolute value button is you hit math, go to the right one, there's your ABS. So I'm just typing it in. Negative eight plus six, get out of there. Minus, math again, ABS, five minus three, okay? Which gives you your answer of zero, okay? So don't hesitate to use this. Please, please, please use it. Cool. All right. Um, I'm going to jump around here for a little bit. Uh, you can see we've got another ascending order one. We just did one of those. Just just put everything right in a calculator. Like as far as square root of 5 goes, just put that in there. You know, root 5 um, is 2.23, so just write that above it. You, you kind of get where we're going with this. So just keep writing things down. You should be in good shape. Okay. All right. Number 8. If a is greater than 0, then 9a squared plus 16a squared equals all that under the radicand. Well, here's the deal. Because they're both a squared, you can combine them together. So 25a squared. Well, then, what's the square of 25? Okay, 5. Well, I can immediately get rid of these two. Here's their trick for doing multiple choice tests. Eliminate as many answers as possible. All right, so now the other thing is, what's the square root of a squared? Just a, plain old a, all right? Um, so we can reduce it down to just 5a. But if you guys can just check out that there's 25 in here, obviously 7 is not really going to be an option. Cross them out. Okay? Um, the value of x squared minus 9 under the radicand is real and irrational when x is equal to. All right? In order to be irrational, you need to have a negative number under the square root. 
Okay. So what you're doing is you're taking your answers and seeing which one of them makes a negative under their square root. So if I do 5, 5 squared is 25 minus 9 is 16. So the square root of 16 is 4. That's good. That's real. Okay. That's, that's rational. It stops. Cross it off. 0. 0 squared minus 9 is just negative 9. Well, I can't do anything with that. Okay, um, it's, it's the square root of negative 9 is um, going to be uh, 3i, okay, which that is um, going to be imaginary. Okay, so actually I just reread this problem. It says real and irrational. So this gives you imaginary. So we don't want that one. Let's take a look at our next one. 4 squared minus 9, 16 minus 9. Gives you square root of 7. All right, if I put in here square root of 7, I actually get an ir like a irrational number. It kind of goes on forever, but the square root of 7 is still real. So that's actually the best option. Because if I put 3 in here, 3 squared is 9. 9 minus 9 is 0. Square root of 0 is 0. All is well. Okay. All right. The expression square root of 215x should be further simplified for which value of x? Basically, all these A, B, C, Ds, all of them, you're going to plug them in, okay, and see what your outcome is. So, meaning, square root of 215 times X, I'm going to put 118 in for X. So, 215 times um, 118, okay, 25,370. Now, I really recommend just going through all these. So, do 215 times 35. 20, 75, 25, okay, if I do 38, 8,170, 8, and then I'll do 33, 7,095. So when it says which of these, if I put in for X, will be simplified down more, you're looking to see what which of these numbers has a perfect square that can go into it. Um, Honestly, for numbers this large, the one that stands out is this 25. The square root of 25 is a perfect square. So this is the one we're after, okay? Um, but, like, you know, look for little hints like that with the square, like, 25 at the very end or, like, you know, 0, 0 at the end so that 100 can go into it. That's something that will help you out there. Okay, suppose Jimmy simplified 6 square root of 425 of the following steps. Which of the following steps is incorrect? All right. He's breaking up square root of 425. Well, look how we broke it up right here. This is actually a step that's incorrect. You can't break up square roots by addition. You have to do it by multiplication. Okay? So what he's looking for really is 6 square root of 25 times, let's see, 425 divided by... Okay. Oops. The times there. So 17. All right, so now what's the square root of 5? Well, it's 5, so we get 30 root 17. Okay, so I understand the thought behind this, but you have to break it up by multiplication instead. Okay? Here's a shout-out, by the way, for moving. Nice. <laughs> okay, so, okay, back to our lovely math stuff here. Okay, um, let's see here. we got time to do some GCF and LCM, then I'll try to wrap up this one video. So we got here GCF. Greatest common factor, you go low, okay? LCM is when you go high. Sorry for my terrible handwriting. It's really bad. All right, so for GCF, don't forget your calculator. If I hit math, go to the right one and scroll down. There's your GCD. Okay, it looks like GCD in your calculator. Um, 10 and 5, it does not do variables, just the numbers, okay? So my GCD is 5. Then you say, which one's lower, x to the 1 or x squared? Well, x to the 1 is lower. Boom, done. Okay? Now, for GCD of three numbers, what you have to do is type in your first two. 8, 12. Okay? And we get 4. Great. But now I want to compare 4 to 36. So I'm going to do this again. Come over here. I'm going to replace the 8 with 4. Place 12 or 36, 4. So my GCF here is just plain old 4. 
Now, we go through all the variables. x third, x, x squared. The lowest one is x because we're going low. Nothing, y cubed, y. The lowest thing is nothing. Done. Okay. All right. GCF over here, um, just to save a little bit of time, 4 can go into 76, so my GCF will be 4. Now checking out my variables, x to the 9th, x to the 7th, low is x to the 7th, h and h, the low is just h, all's well, right? LCM, LCM, same idea, hitting mass. Go to the right, scroll down, here's your LCM, number 8. We're typing 450, comma, 3000. Okay, so my LCM is 9,000. Power level's over 9,000. All right, so then you're going high. You're fine. X squared, X to the fourth. The high one is X to the fourth. Y to the fifth, Y to the third. The high one's Y to the fifth. You just go high for LCM, okay? Um, let's take a look here. Just two more quick problems. Uh, Miss Lawrence over here is sneaking around the room. Trying not to be found, but now she's totally found out. Nice. Okay, so, I know, you're totally in the video now. All right, so, if we take a look at 30, 20, and 15, just type in the first two, 30, comma, 20. Okay, delete, delete. And then we got 60, so we're doing 60 and 15. So we get 60. All right, so, A cubed, A cubed, nothing. The highest is A cubed. B, nothing, B to the fourth, the highest is B to the fourth, good, good, cool, cool. All right, very last one then, LCM, all right, um, we've got 40 and 32. Okay, so 160, high between X and X squared is X squared, high between Y and Y is Y, all right, awesome. Uh, stay tuned for the next video, we'll kind of keep going with this, hopefully this is helping a little bit, and good luck. We are all counting on you.